During the Second World War in Nazi-occupied Warsaw, concerts were banned because the Nazis were concerned that audiences would be stirred by the music into patriotic feeling and rebellion. So my father and his friend Witold Lutosławski very bravely set up a piano duo and arranged the finest symphonic repertoire for four hands and posed as background musicians in cafes. They also gave illegal concerts in private houses where they raised money for the resistance and for people in dire need. Another good friend from conservatoire days, Witold Lutosławski, was at the time earning his living by accompanying a popular group of male singers performing tangos, waltzes and foxtrots. I suggested that we might try something artistically more rewarding, that together we should set up a two-piano duo. Vitold agreed warmly, and our three-and-a-half-year partnership was rapidly established. On the whole, our concerts were without incident. There was, however, one formidable exception. One afternoon, Vitold and I had just launched into yet another duet. I think it was a Brahms waltz, gentle, soft music anyway, and our audience were quiet with concentration when our hearts almost stopped at the sound of gunshot and screams from the entrance hall. A troop of SS men burst in, their pistols still hot, yelling a command for all the women to go to one side of the salon, all men to the other. Panic ensued with mothers, wives, sisters and girlfriends weeping aloud as they embraced their menfolk, convinced they would never see them again. The Gestapo forcibly separated them. Schnell! Schnell! Hurry! Hurry! We had to stand, our backs to the wall, our hands above our heads. The sobbing women were sent home. Once they'd gone, the SS men set about intimidating us with threats and swearing at us. One of them waved a pistol still reeking of gunpowder right close to my nose and snarled, Now you'll see what'll happen to you. We all expected to be shot instantly. However, after standing with our hands above our heads for a seemingly interminable time, Instead of feeling bullets in our flesh, we were ordered out into waiting lorries. As Vitold and I started with everyone else to trudge despairingly towards the exit, the manager of the cafe intervened, persuading the SS commander that we were not members of the public but professional musicians on his staff. Miraculously, we were allowed to stay. It was essential not to falter under the daily terror in which we lived. The next day, we turned up to play again.